morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Ingatu. I hope you had a good week, and I hope that things are going well for you. Everyone has been talking about the economic turnaround and how things are looking better now. One of the things I want to share with you is that there's one thing that happens is when there's confidence, it actually equal, equals trust, meaning that there is trust in the economy, which is absolutely necessary for anybody who is looking to invest, even for yourself. We need to think about, do we trust in this economy? Do we trust in what's going to happen over the next few years for us to be able to make the right investments? Where there is no trust, you can't invest. The beauty is that we've seen a few things happen. The appreciation of the kwacha, um, pre-election and post-election. Yes, we've had, slight, we've had some depreciation, but at least there's a level of stability and confidence that has come back into the market. Even for yourselves, we are looking more confident as a country. One of the questions we always ask ourselves is, how do you begin to save to buy real estate? I think one of the big things is that we always look at how much it costs. It's not a minor investment, it's a very big investment. Then we look at where we can borrow from, then we would, that means looking at the banks, looking at the interest rates, and usually when we do the math, we think, gosh, we can't make it. But remember that real estate is a long-term process. It's not something that is short-term. Even when you speak to people who build houses for themselves, they will tell you that it will take five to seven years. So let's think about the confidence. The reason why I bring in confidence into this discussion today is that it is projected that interest rates are going to come down, meaning that it will be, become more affordable for you and I to, to get a mortgage to buy a house. But they, we don't offer, the, the, most countries don't offer 100% mortgages. They offer 80% mortgages. That means you still have to save 20%. You have to put down 20% in order for you to access that mortgage. And that 20% has to be in cash. That's your contribution towards the mortgage. It builds confidence and trust in the bank that you have the funds available. So why don't we start thinking about buying a property in 2024? Not today, but in 2024. So what should we be looking at? Number one is how much can you afford to pay? Look at your salary today and calculate 40% of your net earnings. That is on average what your mortgage repayment is going to be. So if you look at that and you look at it for in the future, you say, okay, I think I can manage this. Maybe approximately this is how much I'm paying in rent, maybe a little bit extra. But in order for you to save, there has to be a level of sacrifice that's going to happen. So there are little things that you can do that make a big difference. If you've ever heard of um, the latte factor, I was watching it on YouTube the other day, how a lady over a year was calculating how much she had spent on coffee and the little things that we spend money on. She had actually spent $250,000, but I don't think that's you or I. I don't think we would have spent $250,000 on little things. However, if you're going to look at your 20%, calculate, let's say um, you, need to, you want to buy a house or a flat. Let's start with something uh, more reasonable, a flat for about 600,000 kwacha. That means you're looking at 120,000 kwacha that you'd have to probably put down. Where would you start saving? What I challenge you to do over the next 30 days is write down everything that you spend in a day because you might have some money leaks going somewhere. A 50 kwacha here, a 100 kwacha here, it doesn't seem like much, but if you total it up over 30 days, you will be surprised. I know that I personally was surprised as to how much I had actually, money had actually leaked out, which I could have probably taken and invested in something that would have multiplied that, that money. So when you're looking at your 20%, look at it over a two-year period. Yes, now when I say it to you, you say 20% over two years, that's 120,000 over 24 months. How much, is that? how much does that come to? If my math is right, I think we're looking at about uh, 20,000. I think roughly, or 20,000, or is it 12? No, six. It's 6,000 over 24 months, approximately, around about there. But you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. 
But what you can do is now begin to look over the next 30 days and don't change your spending habits. Spend exactly the same way you would. Don't change anything because don't become conscious and say, okay, now I'm saving. Start doing that and see just how much you can save. From that, then at least to give you a direction and a timeline as to how long it will take to raise your 20% deposit. And believe me, when you raise that, you will be, you will be satisfied with it. But the fact that you made little sacrifices, you tracked your expenses so that you could raise your 20% deposit so that when interest rates come down to manageable levels and affordable levels, you will be ready to be able to buy a home. I hope that helps with your financial decision making and your home purchase decision making. I am not a financial expert, I'm a real estate professional, but that's what I have for you today with Coffee with Ingotu. I look forward to hearing you. Please post in the comments, like, share, 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 because knowledge is power when it's shared. Thank you very much and have a lovely, lovely day.